Hello everyone, my name is Christina Wiegand and I am staff here at the South Atlantic Fishery Management Council and this is a public hearing overview for Coastal Migratory Pelagics Amendment 34 which addresses Atlantic King mackerel catch levels and Atlantic King and Spanish mackerel management measures. Here's the agenda for what we'll be going over in this presentation. First, we're going to start with a little bit of background on King Macro Management. Then we'll get into why the councils are considering taking action on King Macro. We'll talk about the specific actions and alternatives, the timeline the amendments on, and then I'll get into some upcoming comment opportunities. First things first, where are we in the amendment development process? Currently, this amendment is at the public hearing stage, and at this stage, the council has had actions and alternatives developed. They've reviewed analysis on those actions and alternatives and selected their preferred alternative. They're now bringing it out to public hearing so they can get input from the public on whether their current preferred alternatives are appropriate and whether there's anything else they should be considering. The council will then review all of this input at their next meeting, consider any modifications to the management actions and alternatives that may need to be made, and then they'll consider it for formal approval. And once they've approved it for formal review, it will then be transmitted to the National Marine Fishery Service to go through their rulemaking process. King mackerel are managed jointly by the South Atlantic Fishery Management Council and the Gulf of Mexico Fishery Management Council under the Coastal Migratory Pelagics Fishery Management Plan. And there are two migratory groups. There's the Gulf Migratory Group, which runs from the Miami-Dade-Monroe County line through the Gulf of Mexico. And then there's the Atlantic Migratory Group, which runs from the Miami-Dade-Monroe County line north to the New York-Connecticut-Rhode Island boundary. And historically, king mackerel and the two migratory groups were thought to mix seasonally off the east coast of Florida and in Monroe County. However, based on a stock assessment that was completed in 2014, the assessment scientists determined that the mixing zone was actually substantially smaller than originally thought and really just constituted the portion of waters off of Monroe County, Florida and south of the Florida Keys. And so in response to that assessment, the councils established the year round boundary of Miami-Dade Monroe County in Florida. And that's the boundary you still see today. Now this amendment, Amendment 34, explicitly addresses catch levels and management measures for Atlantic Migratory Group only. Gulf Migratory Group, King Mackerel, and those management measures will be addressed in a separate amendment. This one only addresses Atlantic Migratory Group, King Mackerel. So why are the councils considering action on Atlantic King Mackerel? Well, an update to the CDAR 38 stock assessment was completed in April 2020, and it indicated consistent with the original stock status that Atlantic King Mackerel are not overfished or undergoing overfishing. Additionally, recreational and commercial landings and catch per unit effort have all showed an increasing trend. And so the councils uh, need to update the catch levels to be consistent with the Scientific and Statistical Committee or SSC's new catch level recommendations for King Mackerel. Additionally, the CDAR 38 stock assessment update includes revised recreational landings that are now based on MRIP's newer fishing effort survey, which is considered more reliable and robust when compared to the original coastal household television survey. And as a result of this change in methodology, the councils are considering revising current sector allocations. In addition to catch level updates, the councils are also considering action to modify a series of management measures based on input from the South Atlantic Council's Macrocobia Advisory Panel. These include raising the bag limit in federal waters off the east coast of Florida to be consistent with the rest of the King Mackerel jurisdiction, a consideration to decrease the recreational and commercial minimum size limit, as well as allowing recreational fishermen to keep cut and damaged King Mackerel and Spanish Mackerel that meet minimum size limits. The reason the councils are considering taking action can be summarized in the amendment purpose and needs statement. 
The purpose of this amendment is to revise the annual catch limits and annual optimum yield for Atlantic Migratory Group King Mackerel, to revise recreational and commercial allocations for Atlantic Migratory Group King Mackerel, and to revise or establish management measures for Atlantic Migratory Group King and Spanish Mackerel. The need for this amendment is to ensure annual catch limits are based on the best scientific information available and to ensure overfishing does not occur in the Atlantic Migratory Group King and Spanish mackerel fisheries while increasing social and economic benefits through sustainable and profitable harvest of Atlantic Migratory Group King and Spanish mackerel. Next, we'll jump into the meat of this amendment and talk about the specific actions and alternatives being considered by the councils. Action one looks at modifying the Atlantic King mackerel stock annual catch limit and annual optimum yield to reflect the updated acceptable biological catch level that the councils received from the SSC. And you can see those levels here. There's a buffer set between the OFL or overfishing limit and the ABC recommendation to account for any scientific uncertainty. And then the councils can consider setting a buffer between the acceptable biological catch level and the annual catch limit to account for any management uncertainty. Here are the specific alternatives under action one. Alternative one, the no action alternative, would retain the current total ACL for Atlantic King mackerel. However, that's based on the older 2014 CDAR 38 assessment and therefore would no longer be based on best scientific information available. And so it's not a legally viable alternative. Alternative two would set the total ACL equal to the updated ABC. Preferred alternative three puts a buffer of 5% in between the ACL and ABC. Alternative four sets a 10% buffer between the ABC and ACL. And alternative five sets a constant catch. And what this means is that the total ACL would be equal to the updated ABC level of 21.8 million pounds. And that value would stay in place from the 2022-2023 fishing season and all subsequent fishing years or until it was modified by management action. And again, the council's current preferred alternative is alternative three, which sets the, AB, the ACL equal to 95% of the updated ABC or puts a 5% buffer in between the two metrics. And here on this slide, you can see the actual annual catch limits that would result from each of the given alternatives. As you can see, you're looking at preferred alternative three for what the council is currently considering, which is the middle column on this table. Action two looks at revising sector allocations and sector annual catch limits for Atlantic King mackerel. Current sector allocations for King mackerel were established back in amendment one to the CNP FMP and catch was allocated based on the largest number of years beginning in 1979 using the average percent distribution of catch between commercial and recreational fishermen. And that resulted in the current sector allocation of 37.1% to the commercial sector and 62.9% to the recreational sector. And again, the councils are considering modifying sector allocations because the CDAR 38 update includes the revised recreational landings that are based on MRIP's new FES method. Now, in a second, I'm going to show you some tables for this action. And what's important to remember is that the revised total annual catch limits in this action that you're seeing reflect the council's currently selected preferred alternative under action one. Here are the specific alternatives considered under action two. The council's current preferred alternative is alternative one, the no action alternative, which would retain the current recreational and commercial sector allocations of 62.9% and 37.1% respectively. Alternative two would allocate 77.3% to the recreational sector and 22.7% to the commercial sector. 
And those numbers are based on maintaining the current commercial ACL beginning in the 2026-2027 fishing season and allocating the remaining ACL to the recreational sector. And this was based on the rationale that the councils didn't want the commercial sector to experience a poundage allocation lower than what they were currently experiencing now. And then alternative three would allocate 68.9% of the total ACL to the recreational sector and 31.1% to the commercial sector. And this is based on average landings for Atlantic King Mackerel from 2014 to 2019. And here on this slide, you can see a table that shows you the actual poundage ACLs that would be experienced by each sector under the different alternatives. Keep in mind that the commercial sector is broken up into two zones. There's the northern zone, which runs from the North Carolina, South Carolina line north, and the southern zone, which runs from the North Carolina, South Carolina line south to that Miami-Dade Monroe County boundary. And so that's why you see the commercial allocation broken up into zones here. And again, the council's current preferred alternative is alternative one, no action. And their rationale for selecting this is a desire to maintain the historical makeup of the king mackerel fishery, given that it's been a management success. Action three looks at revising the recreational ACT or annual catch target for Atlantic King mackerel. The recreational ACT is currently codified and utilized in postseason recreational accountability measures. So those accountability measures state that if recreational landings exceed the recreational ACL and the sum of the commercial and recreational landings exceeds the stock ACL, the bag limit would be reduced the following fishing year by the amount necessary to ensure that landings achieve the recreational ACT, but do not exceed the recreational ACL. And the current recreational ACT is based on adjusting the ACL by 50% or one minus the five year average proportional standard error from the recreational sector, whichever of the two is greater. And so Alternative one would retain the current ACT of 7.4 million pounds. Preferred alternative two would revise the recreational ACT to reflect the updated ABC level using that same equation, the one minus the five year average proportional standard error. Alternative three would set the ACT equal to 90% of the sector ACL and alternative four would set the recreational ACT equal to 85% of the ACL. And so the council's current preferred alternative is to use the equation that's standard for macro management and just update it based on the revised ABC. Action four looks at increasing the recreational bag and possession limit for Atlantic King mackerel in the exclusive economic zone off of Florida. The current bag limit for Atlantic King mackerel and Gulf King mackerel is three fish per person, with the one exception of the east coast of Florida down to that Miami-Dade Monroe County line. In that area, the bag limit is set to match the bag limit specified for Florida state waters, which is currently two fish per person. However, fishermen and the Macrocobia Advisory Panel have requested to raise the east coast of Florida bag limit to three fish per person so that it would match the rest of the king mackerel management area. And here are the specific alternatives under action four. Alternative one would retain the daily bag limit specified by Florida waters, which is two fish per person. And the council's current preferred alternative, alternative two, would increase the daily bag limit for Atlantic King mackerel to three fish per person in the EEZ off Florida. Action five looks at reducing the minimum size limit for recreational harvest of Atlantic King mackerel. In recent years, the Atlantic King mackerel total landings have been well below the total annual catch limit. Fishing mortality rates are well below the target and the recent stock assessment suggests that the total ACL can be increased 
greatly. And so the South Atlantic Council asked their advisory panel if there were any regulatory changes that could be made that might encourage recreational harvests. And one of the things that AP suggested was revising the minimum size limit for Atlantic king mackerel to account for some of the smaller king mackerel that are sometimes landed when targeting other species. Staff additionally went and did an analysis to look at discards and for the recreational sector, we were able to pull discard length data from the FWC charter and headboat trips. And those trips showed that majority, about 44% of the recreational discards were at 23 inches fork length. But there were also discarded lengths down to 22 and 20 inches fork length, which suggests that there are Atlantic king mackerel being caught at lengths below the current minimum size limit and then discarded. Here are the alternatives under Action 5. Alternative 1, or the no-action alternative, would maintain the 24-inch fork length minimum size limit. Alternative 2 would reduce the minimum size limit to 22 inches fork length. Alternative 3 would reduce it to 20 inches fork length. And Alternative 4 considers removing the minimum size limit for recreational harvest entirely. Currently, the councils do not agree on preferred alternatives. The Gulf Council has selected no action, so retaining that 24 inch fork length, whereas the South Atlantic Council has selected alternative two, which is the 22 inch fork length. So one thing the councils would like input on is which um, alternative the public would be comfortable with, what fishermen would like to see for the minimum size limit for recreational harvest of king mackerel. Before the councils can take final action, they do have to concur on a preferred alternative. So there will be more discussion on this action at subsequent meetings. Next up is action six, which looks at reducing the minimum size limit for commercial harvest of Atlantic king mackerel. And again, this is based on the fact that there have been uh, landings have been significantly lower than the ACL in recent years, and the stock assessment does show that that ACL can be increased. The South Atlantic Council did modify commercial trip limits via CMP Framework Amendments 6 and Amendment 8. So trip limits have been addressed, but the Council also wanted to consider minimum size limit based on the request from the recreational sector and keeping things consistent. However, commercial advisory panel members have expressed concern from dealers that smaller king mackerel may result in more fish of a lower value entering the market and may result in heavy targeting of some of these smaller fish when they're available. There was an analysis and it looks like for the commercial sector, discarded fish were about 29 inches fork length, suggesting that there are a large percentage of legal sized fish that are being discarded. As well as commercial fishermen are currently allowed to possess undersized king mackerel, so long as the quantities do not exceed 5% by weight of the king mackerel on board. And here are the specific alternatives under Action 6. These match the ones that you saw under Action 5 for the recreational sector. But again, Alternative 1 retains that 24-inch fork length minimum size. Alternative 2 would reduce it to 22 inches fork length. Alternative 3 would reduce it to 20 inches fork length. And Alternative 4 would remove the minimum size limit for commercial harvest entirely. Additionally, Alternative 2 looks at removing the provision that allows commercial fishermen to possess undersized king mackerel in quantities not exceeding 5%. So under Alternative 2 and Alternative 3, that provision would be removed. And again, the councils currently disagree on their preferred alternatives. The Gulf Council has selected no action, so a 24-inch fork length minimum size, whereas the South Atlantic Council has selected alternative to a 22-inch fork length minimum size. So again, the Council would like input from the public on what minimum size limit is most appropriate for commercial harvest of king mackerel, and the Councils will have to concur on a preferred alternative before the amendment is able to move forward towards final action. 
And last but not least, we have Action 7, which looks at modifying the recreational requirement for Atlantic king and Spanish mackerel to be landed with heads and fins intact. Commercial fishermen are allowed to keep cut and damaged king and Spanish mackerel so long as they meet the minimum size limits. And the recreational fishermen on the South Atlantic Council's advisory panel have requested that a similar provision be considered for the recreational sector, given the issues with damaged king mackerel and the increase in shark depredation. And so there are two alternatives under this, alternative one, uh, would not allow the recreational sector to retain, cut off, or damaged fish because Atlantic king mackerel and Atlantic Spanish mackerel must be landed with heads and fins intact. Alternative two would allow cut off or damaged fish that are caught under the recreational bag limit to be possessed and offloaded ashore so long as they comply with the minimum size limits. And then there are sub alternatives that would allow this for Atlantic king mackerel and Atlantic Spanish mackerel. The councils have currently not selected a preferred alternative under Action 7. So those are all the actions and alternatives being considered in Amendment 34. And here you can see the amendment development timeline. We're currently at the public hearing stage. The South Atlantic Council is going to review this amendment at their December 2021 meeting and consider whether or not any modifications are necessary. The Gulf Council will do the same thing at their January 2022 meeting. The South Atlantic Council will then consider approving this amendment for formal review in March of 2022. The Gulf Council will do the same thing in April 2022. And if both councils concur on preferred alternatives and agree that the amendment is ready for formal review, it will be transmitted for secretarial review and into the NIMS rulemaking process in spring of 2022. There are several different opportunities for you to get your voice heard and make public comment for the council to consider. The first will be a series of public hearings. These will begin with a staff presentation, followed by an opportunity for questions and an opportunity to provide your comments on the record. There will be a public hearing on November 15th and November 16th. Both begin at 6 p.m. and will be held via webinar, and you can register for each of the hearings with the links below. Alternatively, you can also provide written comment. We have an online public comment form that's linked on the slide. You can also send comments by mail or comments by fax. Just keep in mind that the deadline for written comments to be included in the comment overview for the December 2021 South Atlantic Council meeting is November 17th at 5 p.m. Any comments that are submitted after that will still be available for the council to view. They just won't be included in the comment overview. Thank you for listening to this presentation. If you have any questions about this amendment or the Coastal Migratory Pelagic Fishery Management Plan, please, please feel free to contact me. My contact information is on the screen. You can also contact Cameron Rhodes, our Outreach Program Manager, if you have any questions about the South Atlantic Council in general.